Hello everyone, I'm Renee Rollins along with Lisa Burkhart Worley and Michelle Burke. Welcome to Pop Talk, the show where you never know what topics might pop up. by Prestige Development Properties and it's an exciting time for us because we're taping here at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. Thanks to our friends at Overcomers TV and Frank Speech for the use of their booth every day. We are beginning today's program by interviewing a leader at one of the most prestigious Christian film studios in the world. Lisa has the introduction. Well, thank you so much, Renee. I met our guest, Cristobal Cruzet. I did good on that, didn't I? I practiced like 10 times before we started the show. But you know, I met him at a global media summit, and I was just fascinated with him and his work. He is a producer, a director, and now an actor. We're going to talk about that in just a minute through his company, Messenger Films. He's worked on many projects, like Final Solution, Sabina Kay, and I saw that one, it was an excellent movie. Everyone needs to see it. More Than Dreams and Undaunted. But today we're going to learn about his latest film, which I have a really big heart for because my family has struggled with mental illness in the past, and it's called Let Me Have My Son. So we're just so glad to have you on Pop Talk Cristobal. It's, it's really great to see you again. I, I'm an admirer of your work and Messenger Films. And, and this particular work is very personal to you, isn't it? Can you explain why? Well, the movie is based on what happened to my son, my firstborn, who developed schizophrenia in his later teen years and then was um, involuntarily committed to the state mental hospital when he turned 18 and he spent five and a half years uh, under lock and key at a state mental hospital in Virginia where we were living and I became his legal guardian during that time and told the hospital administration well I've decided to move to Mexico with my other children and you need to give me my son because he has to come with us. And we worked it out, moved to Mexico. He went into a psychiatric hospital initially there in Mexico City. And then after four months came home, which had been impossible before in the United States, I'm sorry to say. Um, the doctors in Mexico felt he would do better if he could be at home. And I said, well, that's what I want. I want him to be at home. And so I brought him home. and. And, and things did look so promising for a year. And then he had a very terrible relapse, had to be hospitalized again, but in Mexico. And then after three years there in Mexico, we came to the United States again. And I tried to keep him at home, but it just wasn't possible. <clears throat> the reason I made the film, though, was more than just to tell those facts. There are really two reasons I made the film. And the first is that I wanted the world to meet my son because I felt like he had been snatched away. Um, you know, as a young man, a promising young man, I must say too, you know, great athlete. The, his uh, basketball coach in high school said he has dollar signs on his feet, you know. He, he, he just had all this promise. And then, like, it was as if he was kidnapped, taken away, just Take, and so I want the world to meet my son. And yes. so I've made a movie so that people can meet Daniel, my son. I do change the names in the film. It's not meant to be a literal retelling of the facts. Uh, the second reason I made the film was to offer encouragement to others because as you shared, millions of people are going through something similar. And to the extent that my story can offer a cup of cold, you getting emotional is making me emotional, so maybe sorry. I should keep my eyes on you. <laughs> I know. I told you this is close to my heart because my mother struggled with mental illness, yeah. and she was like so beautiful, yeah. and her her life was just snuffed out all of her life. She, she 
never uh, experienced the abundant life that uh, we, we talk about as Christians. Yeah. She never did. And her, at, at the, I'm sorry, I'm going to just tell the story. At the end of her life, she was in a group home, and they handed me a shoebox, and they said to me, here's your mom's stuff. And at that moment, I knew a ministry was birthed because I didn't want any person's life to fit in a shoebox. And I know that's how you feel about yeah. your own son. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But I, I, I've broken out of that shoebox for sure. I, I, I want to believe the movie will be seen by millions yes. eventually around the world. We've already dubbed it into Spanish, Portuguese. It'll be dubbed into German. Yes. Um, and of course, it'll be seen widely through North America, but around the world too. And so Daniel will, will have an impact. And he's doing better, I will say, oh, as, in his own life. He's soon to be discharged from the hospital where he's been for 12 years. Wow, wow. And wow. he'll be living in a group home miraculous. Uh, initially. And yes. So things are looking up for us. Yes, yeah. that's awesome. Chris Sobel, I wanted to ask you, in the making of this film, was it, how difficult was it to just to relive that, especially because you're playing the part of the father in the film, are you? Yeah. Are you? Yes, yes, that's right. Well, a lot of the angst came out in the writing of the screenplay, I think, and that was done more in private, if you will, right? Um, uh, <clears throat> many times in the writing of the screenplay, I would just weep. Um, but once the screenplay was finished, it provided me a, a bedrock. It provided me a an anchor, it provided me, uh, I like to say a backbone even, like we're able to sit up and stand upright because we have a backbone. Yes. And, and you can't make a movie without a script. And if, and if the script is not a good script, you're gonna slouch or whatever, or be in pain all the time, right? So the more time you spend perfecting as best you can that screenplay, the more you can rely on that backbone when you get into the trenches. And the Lord really gave you the strength to keep perfecting that, even though yes. you were going through that. Yes, yes, you know? yes. And in the filming, I remember toward the end of production, till the end of shooting, I was just utterly spent, you know. And <clears throat> I was acting, directing, producing, and all of this activity going on around me, and I had to somehow stay aware and connected to it all. And I just lowered my head and I said, God, help me, help me. Um, I'm just out of energy, you know. Um, I felt in that moment as though God was saying to me, trust the script, trust the script. Wow. Lean on the script. And I've since thought, you know, that's kind of like the Christian life when we go through hard times and trials. Trust the book. Yeah, trust <laughs> yes. the book. I love that. Lean on the trust book. Trust the book. What a great don't just, word. Yeah, don't give in to your feelings and your emotion, you know, your physical exhaustion at times. Absolutely. Trust the book. Amen. Amen. Mental illness is one of those things that people don't talk about a lot. <clears throat> And yet one out of five children suffer from debilitating mental disorders. Mm -hmm. So why is it important to bring this issue to the forefront through a film like yours? For the reason you say, you know, it's so prevalent, more, much more prevalent than we realize or, yes. or would think, right? Right. Um, I don't know, I don't have any statistic, but I would venture to say that every family, if not every person, knows someone. Yes. who has, a, you know, is going through a trial related to mental health. My son <clears throat> has suffered from what they call severe mental health. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has not historically responded well to medications. Uh, but, you know, OCD is mental health. Uh, anxiety is right? mental health. Yes. Uh, depression. I mean, there are just so many aspects of it all. And, you know, we, we, we talk about physical health, right? Like, right. how are you doing? How's your physical health, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I need to go to the gym or I was... Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <exactly. laughs> but we all have mental health too, yes. don't we? You know? And so that's how I would account for it. It's just 
part of the fabric of life. Yes. You know, a lot of people with mental illness really can't help it, and that's what we found mm -hmm. out about my mom. She yeah. had a traumatic event, uh, the sudden death of my dad two months before I was born of a heart attack. Doctor, she had it all, American dream. And that was it. It snapped her. I think it did something to her brain, and she ended up on all these heavy-duty meds that later they, they just term and cause brain damage. And so I think people understand they don't think like we think, and yeah. we have to love them where they're at, right? Absolutely. And, and, and so can you talk a little bit about the storyline about your son and, and perhaps where it all started? The, the breakdown or? Yeah, which is, where, can you <coughs> talk about the type of mental illness he had yeah. and, and just uh, where it, where you began to notice it and you know, how the movie yeah. developed? Well, there's been, there, there, there has been mental illness in the family. So on my side of the family, uh, his mother's side of the family, and psychiatrists have told me that in all likelihood, uh, Daniel's his illness came from the result of a genetic predisposition that was likely triggered by some drug use and there was trauma in the home, I'm sorry to say as well, that couldn't have helped. Um, it's such an honor for me to say right now, first of all, what a pleasure it is to just sit here and spend time with you because I see your heart. And I know that there are going to be so many people out there watching this that the enemy has attacked them and said, don't get help. No one needs no. to know. Right. This is the way you are, even for parents, the guilt that we carry. So I just want to say thank you so much. And we are so honored right now. Lisa, are we ready for that trailer? Yes, we're going, to, we're going to roll the trailer. Um, and from the movie, uh, no. let me have... My son. I want to come home, Dad. I want to come home. What happened to your son, Benny? You should have seen him run. Miss Christmas is here to help you. No, I don't need any help. You're getting stay-at-home care. Your daughter was showing me some of the family photos. You're a blessed man. I have good news to share with you. Benny's going home. Benny's being discharged today. Mr. Whitmore! We have a history of mental illness in the family, yes. But I never thought it would touch him. No, not him. You know, I always knew this day would come. I always believed it would happen. And it's finally here. I, I mean, it's hard to take in. Hmm. He's not here. <sighs> Must have been sudden. What is that? Benny getting better like that. Sometimes the best cure is patience. I had a dream about him a few days ago. But dreams don't count, do they? I, I, I have to find my son. I don't know where he is. This is my son, Benny. Schizophrenia is an incurable disease, Mr. Whitmore. Let me have understanding. Let me have peace. Let me have strength. Let me have faith. Hope. Love. So how can people find out about Let Me Have My Son? And how can people help you to produce more quality films like this one? Well, those are two great questions. I appreciate you asking <laughs> Absolutely. them. Absolutely. If you can remember the title of the movie and add a .com, that's how you can find out about how to watch it. and So yeah, go to letmehavemyson.com and all the information is there to buy a ticket to watch the movie. We open today. We're not Perfect. in theaters, but we're globally, worldwide, it releases today. 
at a specific website that you have to go to to watch the film. And I want to just uh, clarify, it's it's based on the story, but it's not exactly the story, right? It's a movie, it's a film. Right. It yeah. takes artistic license. Uh -huh. uh, there's a little disclaimer up front, inspired by real events. And that was deliberate. I, I felt led to explore the feelings that, in this case, the father has concerning his son. Uh, and, you know, Robert Frost, the poet, he said, what is poetry? Somebody asked him, what is poetry? And he said, well, poetry is emotion, often the deepest emotion, searching for words. Mm -hmm. And so the movie is trying to bring forth the deepest of emotions in pictures and story and acting and so forth, production. Well, Frost. thank you so much, Cristobal Cruson, for being on Pop Talk. If you want to find Cristobal in his new film, Let Me Have My Son, you can find more at his website, and that is messengerfilms.com. Oh, yeah, that's how you can help me. Donate to Messenger Films. <laughs> Go to Messenger <laughs> yes. Films and donate, messengerfilms.com. Thank you. From promos and commercials to full-length shows, Horizon Media Studios can script, voice, and fully produce programming for television, streaming, and other media. For 15 years and 250 ministries, this Christ-centered 501c3 nonprofit ministry is dedicated to high-quality production and helping other nonprofits produce media. Horizon Media Studios is seeking new ministries to feature. Tell us your story, 561-313-3165.